okay, so we're joined by Corey Tech for today, who is one of my longtime heroes, and uh, we got some ex- like Corey, some really exciting times going on for you these days, hey? Oh my God, I'm flat out. Yeah, as we say, I'm pretty busy. That's great, though. You well, you just you're not long back from uh, France, is that right? Not, <laughs> not long back from France. Nope. Yeah, it was uh, that was a pretty wild little trip. Yeah. Um, just over with uh, Alan Doyle, uh, the trio played on a on a river cruise for uh, a bunch of fans. That was pretty neat. So you, so I assume you had never been to France before that. I had, t- you know, I uh, touched in France a couple of times, but didn't spend a lot of time. But man, that place is beautiful. Like the infrastructure, the it's made for the common good. It's overwhelming yeah beautiful beautiful place my god the food the wine oh it was beautiful (laughs) i would imagine (laughs) lots of pastry and lots of bread and lots of pasta right no that's italy cheese wine bread whatever i could muster yeah (laughs) that's awesome well i'm glad you made it back that's that's exciting stuff i'm glad everybody's able to tour again and get back to somewhat normal life right big time yeah it was a bit messed up there for a while yeah um, and you seem like you're flat out, like you've been everywhere. You've been touring flat out and lots of uh, lots of stuff coming up in the new year. But the big news these days, of course, is the Ron Hines uh, tribute album. How long? So you 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 have an album coming out on 20th of October that you co-produced with Alan Doyle. And it's 20 songs from Ron Hines' uh, catalog. That's a- Yeah, it, it's, a tri- it's a Ron Hines retrospective, basically. I mean, it's um, 20 Newfoundland artists singing 20... Uh, Ron Hines songs and every bro- everybody uh, brought their A game, man. And 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 we were thinking, okay, well, when we thought about putting this together, we're like, okay, well, we should probably start making some calls to see if people are available and if they wanted to do it. And uh, it was impossible to get a no. <laughs> everybody was all over it. Everybody's calendars freed up all of a sudden, hey? Quick, very quickly, yes. <laughs> and was it hard to pick 20? Because I don't know how many is in the catalog altogether, but I would imagine, I'm hearing jokes that there could easily have been a second album of 20 songs. Oh, there's, not, there's, there's no joke. I mean, there's, uh, well, if, you, if, if Myth, if we were to listen to Myth, there'd be 980 more, A Man of a Thousand Songs. Um, I, I mean, there's just so many Ron Hines songs that, that are favorites and, of mine and many people, but, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, we sort of called people, what, what do you think you want to do? And they picked what they wanted to do and we were cool with it. Just, you know, didn't want to make it, you know, you have to do this song, just do, you know, the, the joy about doing a record like this and the joy of this particular record indeed was the fact that we asked everybody to, to, to come in with, you know, what song they wanted to do. And it was for Ron Hines and Everybody came to this thing with respect, dignity, and a sense of gratitude to be on it. And and you can hear that when you put this friggin' record on. It's, you know, and I hope that people, when they listen to it, they listen to it with the love and respect that, that it was recorded with. Because he's, uh, he's our greatest. I agree, 100%. And I know, so your last EP that you had out, I think, was that last year or two years ago? Uh, came out in 1932, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, last EP, uh, 2020, December 23rd, 2020 was the last EP. The last single came out uh, the year following. So wow, 20, I can't. That's I can't believe it was that long ago. But you had a song that's on that album um, that was a Ron Hines tune that was just and exactly like you described it, very respectful and very. Um, just honoring what it was. It was re- yourself and Kendall, of course, and it was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So I expect this vinyl, oh, this uh, twenty-song album, is going to be very similar to that vibe of just full respect and um, just treasuring, you know, what's going on. So there was no, it wasn't prescriptive at all. They were able to pick the songs that they wanted to play. Hundred percent. It was, you know, very organic. Really, I mean, people. Uh, said, oh, I'd, I'd like to do that. Is anybody doing this song? And and you know what? There were no um, no conflicts, which is odd, really, when you think about it. Everybody everybody sort of has their own favorites, you know. And um, and everybody, you know, of course, came with respect, gratitude, you know, uh, very professional. 
uh, but also with a bunch of creativity. Like there's there's versions of songs that, that are going to take people a second to realize what song they're listening to. But when it kicks in, you're like, oh, my God, that's a cool version. Well, we hope. I don't, <laughs> Again, we, I don't know. But uh, we love it. Uh, everybody involved, uh, we love it. We love Ron. So, you know, I mean, it's just a, we, we just hope that, that it's going to come across in the spirit uh, from which it was recorded. And so how long did it take to get everybody together and lay all the tracks, not to mention the post, of course, but how long did it take to get everything recorded? Well, there were four tracks started in, I think, 2021. Um, COVID really, the second or third or 17th or 900th wave, I'm not certain <laughs> which one it was, sort of put a bit of a kibosh on it, but there were four uh, tracked originally. Then 16 that uh, we tracked over, uh, I came back to Newfoundland um, for five weeks and myself and Doyle sat down and came up with a, a plan of how we were going to do it and we we're going to produce it with these beautiful uh, artists and, and young and old people that uh, I had the the privilege of meeting during the first session and then people I've known for 300 years and have respected and, and, uh, and our colleagues of mine that I'm grateful to call colleagues and friends. So, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, the tracking of it was probably let, let's say maybe seven, five to seven weeks. But then of course there was, you know, mixing and editing and some overdubs and that kind of stuff. But, um, none of it was a, was a chore. <laughs> It was just all, yeah, man, it was just all uh, a joy. God, it was a joy. That's really sweet. So how much of it did you play on? Like, we're, I know there was, like, the, um, the Wonderful Grand Band did some songs. Uh, Tim Baker played. Like, most of the most of the artists actually played their own tracks, right? So how much were you playing and how much were you doing the production part of it and the mastering? Well, uh, myself and Doyle uh, produced and or co-produced with all of these artists, Um and then myself and Doyle, of course, through that process, lent our musical abilities to what everybody needed. Some needed just a couple of tracks, some needed uh, from the ground up. So um, there's a bunch of us on it for sure, uh, you know. But then there are are songs that we uh, we just sat back and were in awe of when they were delivered to us, um, uh, the the final tracks, you know. So there, there's a bunch of it uh, that. Yeah, most of it was recorded uh, at um, a couple of places in St. John's. Um, but then uh, let's take, for example, the once they recorded a bunch of it in Cornerbrook and my God, their version of uh, Atlantic Blue is just breathtaking. Jerry singing that. Yeah, it's beautiful. They are really awesome. So I know you toured with Ron many, many years ago. And of course, you grew up with the songs just like we all did. Um, was there any of them that were particularly hard for you to... Uh, not feel them in the room when you were working with the songs and stuff? Like, did you feel them in the room at all? Oh, he was in the room. Yeah. I mean, if you know Ron, uh, that's sometimes awesome, sometimes not. Uh, <laughs> it was a hard case. Um, you, well, he was a perfectionist and he wanted stuff to be done a certain way. And uh, we felt the gravity of that for sure. Um, you know, it's it's a big ask and a big catalog of, of beautiful material written about our homeland and so it's thick man you can't just go in and um mess around with this stuff you can't go in and say well i don't i wonder what we're going to do today i mean of course there was some of that but um when it comes to when we made the decision to take this on um doyle and i talked a lot about it and um and uh it, it of course it was an honor to think that we could maybe do it but and and get away with doing doing uh the 20 songs with these you know beautiful uh bunch of artists is quite the friggin honor hmm. uh and of course you said ron's perfectionist but i think i would describe you as pretty meticulous yourself so i'm sure <laughs> from what i would have known of ron hines i'm sure it was he would have been pretty comfortable with it in your hands that every everything was going to be exactly you know as good as it possibly could be right well, one would hope, uh, but you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, just to be involved. But I, my first uh, time <laughs> recording a record for Ron was back in 1997. I was two years old. No, I was a young man. Uh, I was playing full time with Ron at the time, and um, 
we did a live record, supposed to be a live record called Standing in Line in the Rain. And certainly there's a, there are several live tracks on that record, but we also went in the studio and, um, and recorded a bunch of stuff for that too. So I've been playing and recording Ron Hines songs for most of my adult life. And, um, and it still freaks me out. (laughs) (laughs) I love this stuff. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's gorgeous stuff, and I, I'm sure I, I've, I assume everybody feels the same way. But that's kind of one of those things when you love something, you feel like everybody else must as well. Um, but I'm I'm really excited to hear all the songs. Of course, Tim Baker, the one with Tim Baker is already out. So there's a video with that, and yeah. was there one with Amelia Curran released as well? Correct. Yeah, yeah, uh, Dark River, and uh, yeah, that's yeah, it's it is just quite beautiful. Um, uh, her and Dwayne Andrews, just the two of them sat down, uh, and I put up two microphones and they sat in the, in the live room and, uh, I turned the speakers up and they started playing and me and Doyle just, our, our, our jaws just dropped. It's, it's so, uh, uh, immediate and intimate. And, uh, I remember capturing it and going, oh my God, that, this is beautiful. And indeed when I went to mix it, uh, I, I just, I, I, I didn't want to mess it up. So I didn't even put any reverb on the mix. I, I just, you know, for all those uh, audio nerds out there, um, I, I just, I just left it as, as much as I could as, as it was, cause it was just a beautiful moment captured, just gorgeous. And it was just a regular room you were recording in. You weren't like in a church or a sound studio or anything like that. No, we we were uh, privileged to be able to get the Devon House uh, downtown. And uh, so myself, Alan Doyle, and Peter Green went in several days before we had uh, scheduled any of the, uh, the bands to come in and artists to come in and, uh, you know, made it into a studio. And uh, to be honest with you, it was, a, it was cool to see an old, um, uh, you know, a, a, I don't, the thing must be a hundred or 150 years old and to see an old, um, downtown St. John's, um, building like that morph into a studio was pretty cool, man. I, I, I enjoyed it. I'd do it in a heartbeat again, man. So cool. That's really, it's so funny because I know so many people know you as a musician, as a, as a performer, but there's this whole other side to you of producing and mixing and mastering and capturing, like, which is also an art form of getting the sound in the room. Um, so that's, is that, would you say that's like one of your top five things that you like to do? Like, would you like to be producing more? It's my favorite thing in the world to do. Well, my favorite thing, to, to, if we're going to hit it on the net, my favorite thing in the world to do is mix music by, uh, by a long shot. The studio, the studio, yeah, I mean, as I've gotten older, it's my favorite thing to do. I mean, I still love singing and playing for people and, and, um, and feeling you know that cyclical energy that that happens. You know when it ha- when it happens it doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's powerful. But the joy, the creative, the the in the moment, the capturing of humanity. It, I, f- I find it such a responsibility, uh, and I, it's, I'm very passionate about it. It seems like just uh, recording a moment in time, and you're leaving something behind. So it's not just if you're at a concert and you're getting the moment, but it seems like. I, I don't know if it's age as we get older or something, but leaving something that you know someone can pick up a hundred years from now and put it on a record player, which ironically, this album is also on vinyl, which is mm-hmm. mind blowing because everything sounds better on vinyl. But there is something really <laughs> magical about leaving something that can be played back after that that will recapture the same feeling. It's our res- it's it's our responsibility to be honest with you. I, I find I'm I feel very strongly about it. It's a responsibility of artists, songwriters. Um, any, any artist, art is for the people uh, now, but anytime, uh, and, and, and true art, if it's honest and true with humanity in it, will speak. It doesn't matter to how many people who gives a, who gives a, if you can bleep this out, who gives a shit? <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's literally, it's, it's. It's humanity. It's it's who we are right now. And it records yeah. the moment in time. And you yes. know, I think people assume you're going to be able to do something forever. 
Uh, but there's something about capturing those moments, like having those recordings of Ron live from shi- um, in Standing in Line in the Rain. Mm. Like having a, a recording off the floor is like that doesn't exist. You know, we never thought anyone we'd ever lose anybody. And here that's the only time that's the only chance you can now to go back in that room and hear him play live. Right. Yeah, no. <clears throat> so yeah. it's it is kind of a magical thing. And of course, be able to mix and master and get it to a sound. Where it was also um, scientific, but also very um, is it like a real feel to when you got it? And you're really, really good at it. It's what I'm getting at. It's oh, like you're, a, you're kind. It shows that you love it because um, it's uh, it comes across. I'd be doing it anyways. How's that? You know, that's a funny thing. That's what I'm kind of measuring in my life a lot now is would I do this for free? Like the money yeah. is fabulous. It's great. It's nice to get rewarded and energy exchanges and all that stuff. But a lot of times checking in and going, you know, even if I wasn't getting paid, I'd do this for free. is kind of the benchmark mm-hmm. right now for is it joyful work? Is it creative work? Is it leaving something behind I'm proud of? And, you know, I've learned from the best, really. I've had some really great mentors and you know who I mean. Um, it's I've been really honored to for the people that we've been able to work with. And I have a question here from my producer just slipped me a note. He's wondering if yep. mixing and mastering for vinyl is any different from uh, the digital stuff. Big time. So I, uh, I work now with uh, very closely with um, uh, John McLegan, um, a, a beautiful, spectacular mastering engineer um, out of, uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's brilliant. So we've been working together now for almost a couple of years, I suppose. And, uh, and he, uh, yes, he mastered this record. Uh, I mixed it uh, myself and Doyle, of course, produced it and, uh, and um, I mixed it and then we handed it off to John and he, um, he mastered it and, and mastered it, and, and uh, he now has the ability to actually cut vinyl. He told me a couple of days ago, so that's a, that's a wild thing. So I, th- I guess the rest of my records are going to be on vinyl. <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, there's really some, putting something on a turntable is just a magical experience. That's like I agree. That's as close to you can get as being in the room because it's you know imprinting on the vinyl, like it's actually scratching it into the vinyl, which is just spectacular. Beautiful. John McLagan is highly highly educated and like i think he have a jazz background if i'm not mistaken like he has like a master's in jazz music and he, they him and his wife started out like or really organically at farmers markets playing two or three folk songs they knew they're amazing wow. they're just amazing they're spectacular i love john i love him as a person and i love him as a professional he's spectacular yeah just very very studious yeah uh yeah parachute mastering if you need your records mastered parachute mastering that's am- I, that's a, if there was anyone you were going to pass anything on to like that it, he's amazing he is absolutely amazing and very careful and, and warm like just a warm friendly human being too just. warm human being yeah and it's it's neat to as as a mixer producer mixer it's it's imperative uh, as i found uh, to find a second set of ears that you explicitly trust and i and i completely trust john I mean, he's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a working relationship. We're constantly back and forth saying, you know, okay, so what was the bottom, like bottom end, like uh, on the, uh, on that rhythm section? Well, just tweaking it, you know, there's constant back and forth. It's, it's so cool. It's nice when somebody else has the language and gets it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the record, of course, the album is coming out on, of course, it's digital and CDs and all that, but it is coming out on double vinyl, white vinyl, which is also amazing. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. And the artwork, of course, the, the cover artwork is from Judd Haynes. Is there anything? I know the release is coming out on October 20th, which is also, that's a big day for us as well. We've got a book coming out. and oh, I know, cool. Yeah, and I know, actually, you're in it. I should tell you, you are on page 11. <laughs> you okay. should go check it out. All right. <laughs> Cool. Um, I can't you, wait to read it. It I was hope, a night. Maybe. It was, oh, my God. Yes, absolutely. So it was the night that we met down in uh, Stone Mountain. Uh, at Brownfield. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was a night that, I mean, it changed my life. Because I, after, we were, we were living in Maine. I went down to yep. interview Alan, of course. And um, so it's, the story's in there. It's really great because it was a really rough weekend otherwise. And you guys were so nice to me. Like, in such a shitty time in my life. Um, it kind of shifted things for me. So I went home. We were living in Maine at the time. We moved to New Brunswick shortly after. And I wrote my first book. And you're thanked in the back of my first book, For the Grace of Joe. And then the second one that we put out a couple of weeks ago, uh, I told that story about meeting you guys in Brownfield. And what was my point there? What was Why was I telling you that? The date. Oh, the date. Oh, October 20th. Yeah. So Tim Baker has an album coming out October 20th. Uh, the uh, Sunny Don't Go Away uh, 20 song tribute to Ron Hines is also coming out on October 20th. And did I ever see Tim Baker? Oh, in the book, How to Fail Documentary Filmmaking. 
Oh, cool. Yeah, you told me about this, but okay, cool. You got yeah. you, you, it's completed. Okay, I'm looking forward to reading that. Yeah, we'd so we'd of course we started out doing that as a, it started out as a book idea, and I mentioned it to my friend mm-hmm. Adam Liley, who's a DP for um, Trailer Park Boys. And yes. he said, make a documentary out of it. And I was like, okay. And it was during the pandemic. <laughs> and so it was going to be a show. And you and I worked on the theme song. And then there was a song that yep. went with it called Loser Anthem. We put on on our first EP this year. And <laughs> it was like, this show was never, ever going to get made. So I went back to the book idea and worked on it. I've never edited something so much in my lifetime. <laughs> but I'm really proud of it. I'm really, really proud of it. And I think you'll like it as well. And it was, it's well, just. Congratulations. It, thank you very much. We called it fiction because it's just easier. I'm, like it's all made up everything in it is true every single word of it but well let's call it fiction because that's just easier perfect but yeah so we're excited october 20th is going to be a really really big day for a lot of uh and we, we're doing a thing there's a music nl is doing their music celebration week here as well in st john's that week and we're on a thing with chris batstone we're doing some kind of oh awesome some kind of uh i'm not sure what it's even called but he's doing some kind of show down at the emira so yeah it's a big day so my question um on the release date, is there any sort of... I know there was a show last year around Christmas time when there was a big tribute to Ron down at the hotel downtown. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. hotel. Look, how small town is that? <laughs> you know the, you know the yeah, hotel in town. The hotel. <laughs> and I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it's called now, it used to be the Delta. Um, yeah. But there was a great big show um, like that last year with a bunch of people singing Ron Hines. So is there any plans to do any sort of touring with this or any sort of the bands, the, you know, the musicians coming back together to do any sort of live release? Or is it just product, just merchandise? Well, w- w- that has been talked about a ton. Yeah. And uh, I do believe that that will happen. I'm uncertain as to when, that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, I, I don't... As long as the seed is planted, because I know that was a big hit. The, the, Ron would have loved to see that sold-out ballroom. That was incredible. He definitely would have loved to see the sold-out ballroom. Oh, sure. they were lined up. They were, like, standing room only. They were lined up around the walls. It was amazing. Standing in line in the rain. Absolutely. And so I know, <laughs> of course, every year there's a Feast of Cohen down at the LSPU Hall. God love them. They sell out like 400 seats or something. But, you know, I would imagine my suggestion, I'm throwing it into the mix here, is every single year tribute to Ron, whoever can be there um, and just sell out whatever, whatever room you can get into, make sure it's blocked right to the (laughs) right to the doors. It's a a fun night of music. That's for sure. Oh, it really is. And it's such a vibe too. like he was such a fun person to watch live. Just going to see Ron at the Rose and Thistle. And that's the very first chapter of my book also involves going to see uh, Ron Hines at the Rose and Thistle. Last night I met Adam Liley and it was just like magical things happen when Ron Hines is around and he's still around. I mean, I know a lot of people feel that way. He's still got a really heavy, heavy, heavily in heavy influence on a lot of musicians that are, you know, been around for a while and just starting out. It's, you know, I know there's a couple of musicians on here who actually probably weren't around when Ron was playing. Uh, probably, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the dude is, well, he's our Dylan, man. Like he's... I think Quote the Raven right? was who who I'm thinking of. I think Quote the Raven were the ones that said um, they they didn't really see him play live or anything. Like they were too... No, yeah, yeah. There, there were definitely a couple of uh, uh, Youngsters. Of <laughs> on this uh, on this project, I mean, it's it seems odd to me because I'm an old fella, but uh, <laughs> I was young when I started playing with Ron. But um, yeah, so I mean, I had the privilege of seeing him, but also playing with him, mm. which was so, so educational as a, as a kid. I was in my twenties, and uh, I got the I got the call to go uh, to learn uh, a double sided cassette. Uh, and and another side uh, for because I had to fill in. For, I, I don't know if it was Glenn Simmons that couldn't make it, or I don't know if it was Sandy. I'm not certain. And I was scared to death. And anyways, the rest, as they say, is history. So. I bet you would be scared to play with Ron Hines. That was a oh boy, that's a yeah. daunting that's a daunting project. Uh, what we normally do on Mulberry Creek Hour, Corey, is we usually have a um, usually people come into the studio and they play for us. So how mm-hmm. how do you feel about playing a tune for us from your studio up in Nova Scotia? How do you feel about playing a song for us right now? I'd love to. So what do you got? What do you got on the uh, what's in the hopper for us? Well, it's the song that I did on 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 this uh, this record on the Ron Hines tribute record. It's called "Shines Like Diamonds," and it's from "Standing in Line in the Rain," the record that uh, that the, uh, myself, um, Sandy Morris, uh, of course, who produced it, mm-hmm. um, and Glenn Simmons. Uh, there was Boomer Stamp, Byron Party, and Paul Kinsman, and of course, his nibs, the man himself, Ron Hines. And uh, so we. Uh, we did a, a record, it's 97, I do believe. And um, I remember listening to this, man. Ron was the, the 
Ron had the ability to write a th what we call a three minute movie. And you can see, you can not only hear the lyric and the chord progression and the melody, but you can see, you can see it happen in your mind's eye. That's the cool thing about Ron Hines. He, he and it's an art form, it's an art form that, um, I hope we're not losing, but it's sort of, it's taken a bit of a, it's taken a bit of a rest. But, uh, and so when I was listening to this years ago, I was like, man, I'd love to sing that song. And years later I started doing it live. So when I was asked, asked to do a song on this record, I immediately grabbed that one. Shines like diamonds. So I'll do it for you now. That's cool. That'd be amazing. <laughs> the summer came I never knew it became you All I thought about as I headed south Was your mouth and your eyes so blue The trailer park that was dingy and dark Not the spark of a single dream In a company town where the dark old Slept in the frozen ground It was 40 below It was ice and snow North of the Timberline The northern lights Would shine like diamonds Shine like diamonds You wouldn't even mind In crude boys with bets on the side on when the air the basket would break when the ice would crack and the river would rush like a prisoner about to escape there'd be 45 guys and five women sinking down devils at the sin house bar where you could face that scene over TV dinner and frozen stars. Well, the days would grant you no release, yeah, and the nights were just as kind. But the northern lights would shine like diamonds, shine like diamonds. Trying to paint some distance This boom town lay straight along my Line of least resistance well, I got out when the summer came I never knew it became you All I thought about as I headed south your mouth and your eyes It was 40 below It was ice and snow North of the timber line But the northern lights Would shine like diamonds Shine like diamonds and you wouldn't even mind crying Oh my God, Corey, I'm, whew, wow, that, uh, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. Uh, Shine Like Diamonds has always been one of my favorites. And I, of course, it talks about the Northern Lights, which are, you know, this thing that I might never get to see, but it kind of has this, you know, this quality of, um, you almost need to see it, you know, you need to be there. And I'm kind of made me think, 
like what do you see when you're singing this song and when you hear it and, and all that like what do you see after having all this history with Ron Hines um what do you what movie is playing in your head what do you see when you're when you're playing that song I see the character of Ron through the character that he wrote so uh you know up in some uh, town uh, working seven days a week um you know where the uh where the gold, uh, dark gold <laughs> lies in the frozen ground. And, uh, you know, I see Ron sitting down to a frozen meal and then wondering if he should get up and go to the bar where, you know, he'll have a beer and maybe not talk to anybody. But I, I see Ron when I sing this song. And it's, it's, it's cool and lovely and just a little sad sometimes. Mm. I would imagine that that uh, comes out a lot those yeah. flashes of really missing them and sometimes like walking the streets of st john's it's just really sad it just you know it just like the whole thing is shut down like you know on those days when there's like a holiday like regatta day and stuff and all the stores are closed and life just stops it that's how it kind of yeah. feels in st john's without them around and uh, it sucks we were given a beautiful time in history to be around when he was there and, and i Personally, I'm grateful for the time I had with him. Um, some some of it was tumultual. I mean, some of it was was a hit or miss. Later in his life, I, I had the joy of touring uh, through the arts and culture centers in Newfoundland myself and and him and Brian Bourne. And uh, it was a good time in Ron's life, and he he answered all my questions about uh, his life. You know, the wonderful grand band growing up, his influences. Um, and it was a, a time I'll always cherish, uh, but certainly it's, um, uh, it's a drag that he's gone, but, uh, it was a privilege to have him around. That's for sure. Hmm. That was poetic. That's, that's, um, there's like a, in film, there's like a golden light. Um, sometimes when the sun's going down and everybody tries to rush to get that golden light and it just feels like that experience of there's just this magic thing that happens when you get somebody talking about thing, something they love to do that they've mm. found in their life and they're passionate about and they just get to sink into it. And um, for you, for me, you're one of those people to get to talk to you oh, about geez. things you care about. Um, it, it's being passed down, right? Like that feeling you can teach, you yeah. can teach somebody how to play guitar, or how to write a song, but passing on that passion for music and creativity and the language is being passed on to other people. And I'm really glad the people that were involved in this project and that it was in your capable hands and caring hands. Cause I know you would honor, um, everything about Ron, everything that he embodied, bad and good. Like he, you know, he was not a person. He's kind of like a pine, trying to hug a pineapple. <laughs> it was yeah. very hard to be close to. Um, but of course, you know, if you can get past the rough exterior and stuff, um, there's some real beauty there. Oh, he, he was a sweetheart, really, when it came down to oh, it. Oh, absolutely. And myself and Alan Doyle, we sat, we sat on the bus. Uh, we tour, of course, all the time together. And we've spent hours talking about songs and, oh, it, you know, at three minutes and 42 seconds, Sandy did this lick. Or, you know, it just geeking out about Ron and and, uh, and our musical influences. So when we sat down and said, okay, let's do this record, we were both scared and kids just, just right before Christmas. So excited to, to put it together. And, I mean, Alan has an infectious energy anyways. And... Um, and uh, I've been trying to keep up with him now for professionally for <laughs> since '94 or whenever we met. The day that the recording was finished, I was in Portugal Cove, and I had a thought that day that I had a question, like that was kind of you know holding me back from doing some musical things and creative things, and I had just had this question that. I, in my brain said, I wish I could ask Alan that. Like, I just wish I could get Alan's thoughts on what this thing is that's, you know, locking me up. And I drove from Portugal Cove and I had this little, just little inkling to turn down a road down by the old hotel. And there was Alan standing on the side of the road loading stuff in with Peter Green. And oh, yeah. uh, it just might, it, it shifts my life every time I see him. Eventually I'm just going to turn around all the way around. <laughs> it just, yeah. but he was so exactly like you just said, he was so excited about having the project done. It was almost as if he had just started it. He was so thrilled yeah. to have it done. And what, he was so excited about what was coming. And someone um, passed by us on the road while we were talking. And he was like waving at this lady. He was like, Dee Dee, you're not going to, we just finished a Ron Hines album. And he was like a kid at Christmas. <laughs> it was beautiful. 
he's always like a kid at Christmas. That's why I love him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know this is really important to both you guys, and I'm just glad it came into your, that it came out across your desk that it was an opportunity for both you guys because it really um, honors everything. And he also, Ron, of course, was, I know a lot of people tell this story that Ron gave us permission to tell our own stories. Yeah. I, I'm going to go back to this again. Like the very first song that uh, Mulberry Creek released was a little edgy, had some swear words in it. And there were some stories in there that were like a little, um, you know, a little rough. They were true and it. real. I but I remember it. having yeah. a conversation with you when I said I was afraid to release it. And you said, you know, um, I don't know if you remember this or not, but you said, you know, people need to be mindful of the legacies they leave behind and, um, Correct. you know, tell your story. And it was just that little, so I, what I very sincerely mean this, like passing on that torch of tell your stories and don't be afraid to put it to music and, you know, to be real to who you are and to tell what you know and all those beautiful things that it matters coming from someone you love and respect. It encourages people in the best kind of way. And so thank, I want to thank you very profusely for the influences you've had on me and the, the encouragement and advice I've gotten from you um, and the inspiration to, you know, sometimes like I'll have a conversation with you in the moment and then I'll feel so jazzed about it weeks later that I'll sit down and write a few more chapters or I'll write another song or whatever. So it, Ron is alive and well in people like you. I am grateful to have any influence on anything. <laughs> so I'm very grateful. So I, I have this question. I want to savor this moment because I know how big this is for you. Um, I'm going to ask you a question, and I just want you to savor the moment of being able to give me this answer. But um, you have uh, we have some exciting news coming up uh, in November. And so I just, I'm going to say, Corey, the next time you're in Newfoundland, I'd like to come see you. Um, how could I do that? Oddly enough, <laughs> I am doing, I've been in this uh, professionally 31 years now. And uh, I have the amount of touring that I've done. Uh, I can't even remember. I don't even want to think about it. Uh, but I have never done a solo tour with my own particular music with a band. And uh, in November, uh, starting on the 18th in uh, Carbonear, Newfoundland, I start uh, my first tour wow. with a band. Yeah, so it's the 18th <laughs> of November in Carbonear, 20th in Stephenville. 21st in um, in Corner Brook, yeah, 22nd Grand Falls, 23rd in Gander, uh, day off to get to St. John's for the 25th, November 25th in St. John's, and then we go to Lab West on the uh, 26th to end the tour, and I might even have a drink after that one. I might. <laughs> Look at our boy growing up. Now, how amazing is that at the Arctic Culture Center? I was just at a show there just very recently, and I just remember going there in kindergarten to, you know, school outings and stuff. I'd just being amazed by those bright lights up over, this, over the audience. It just looks yeah. like stars. And I just to be on that stage is, um, whew, you know, that's the whole thing, right? Like you set the goal and you say, one of these days I'm going to be on that stage. And, you know, I know it didn't take you 31 years to get there. I'm sure you could have toured a long, long time ago. You've got an illustrious history of uh, beautiful music going all the way back, of course, to the days of Crush and touring with Alan Doyle for the last 10 years at least. Or is it 11 now? Uh, almost. It's uh, It'll be 12 years on the 12th of February. <laughs> so there's no shortage yeah. of stages, I know, and audiences and all, but it must be really nice to go back to play. You're from Grand Falls originally, of course, right? I was born there, yeah. I mean, I, people always say, well, you're from Grand Falls. Well, not technically. I was born there. Went back for a year um, when I was a kid, uh, and then another few years as, an, uh, as a young man before I moved to St. John's. So I moved around a ton when I was a kid, but uh, my dad being my dad being a preacher, so it's got to be nice to go back to come back to Newfoundland and be able to tour the arts and cultures like big, massive centers like that. I'm 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 again both thrilled, excited, and uh, a little scared, but I'll be all right. So, do you get nervous before <laughs> shows? Like, how how are you now after all these years? You said thirty one years of of playing professionally. Like, do you get any kind of jitters or anything before shows? That's a that's a it's a, a different question for different situations. So, as a side man to go out, uh, say with someone like Alan Doyle, who can control a room or a or a, a big festival. Uh, no, I, I really don't uh, because, we, you know, we've been playing together for, you know, almost 12 years. We know the stuff inside out. We know the material um, and we know how to put on that show. So no, I don't. There's a, a big difference between that and then me going out and being the front dude where I have to run a show and, uh, and think about um, 
you know, the, the ebb and flow. It's not the music, playing and singing and that stuff comes easy. It's the in-betweenies, you know, like uh, making sure that you're running uh, songs together and all that fun stuff. So it'll take my, it'll take me a couple of shows to, to, to put that hat back on good and firm, but, um, it'll, it'll, uh, I, I'm just, at, look at, at my age, this is going to be such a joy to get out and sing for people. And, uh, the reason I sing is a very specific reason, um, and it's to uh, to share uh, emotion and energy and humanity with people. So I'm hope. I mean, I don't know if that sounds cliche. I don't really care. Uh, it's the truth. It's the truth. Uh, so I hope that people, um, if they come out and see the show, you know, they'll um, they'll leave with something in their back pocket they didn't have before they came. So as Ron would say, when I hit the naked spotlight, I got everything in tune, right? If it's not in tune, it's too late at that point, but it's too late. <laughs> so, of course, the EP the EP was Road Songs. That was out in 2020. 2020, yeah, right? 2020, December 23rd, 2020, my brother's birthday. Yeah, I released it. And then I just released, uh, it, was, it might have been last year, uh, I released a single called A Little Rain. So I'll be playing that stuff. And, of course, stuff from my... My other two solo records, some classics from the old Crush records. Uh, myself and Paul just did a um, a show this summer. It was the first time in a while. That was a lot of fun. Crush I played a reunion thing. So we'll be doing some Crush stuff. A couple of uh, songs that from you know major influences uh, of mine. So yeah, I think it'll be a fun fun evening. Lots of stories. And Chris LeDrew, who must I mean. He still scares the he still scares the crap out of me because he's Chris LeDrew, so I still get jittery around him. But he yeah. is like, and so me he's going to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> so he's playing. So he's doing a set to open up, and he's also playing uh, the show with you, right? Correct. He's going to be doing uh, an opening acoustic set, and then we'll have a little uh, quick changeover. And um, he's going to be coming out playing uh, mostly pedal steel, but some electric guitar and acoustic guitar and singing and. It's going to be a fun, to be honest with you, I just want to have fun with the boys on stage and I'm hoping that that's going to, you know, people are going to dig it. I'm sure. I, I'm sure. So who else is in your backing band? So Chris McFarlane, who plays, I've been playing with him now with Alan Doyle for years. He's been playing uh, with Alan for 21 years now. And I uh, got lucky enough for him to say yes. And then uh, Ronald Hines, Ron Hines. Not the. Um, um, not the, but the, but I'd say the, the Ronald Hines is going to be playing bass um, and and uh, the boys are going to be singing some backing vocals. It's going to be a big vocal evening too. It's going to be a lot of fun with the boys singing backing vocals to the stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm eager. I'm just going to be a fun show in a little down section, maybe some acoustic stuff, stuff on the piano. And then some full on rock and roll. And a lot of your and most of your stuff, right? Like stuff that you've written, which is a whole other oh, conversation. Yes. I've had you on here for like, if, you know, I can talk to you all day, but a lot of your own creations, <laughs> which are spectacular. Oh, you're very kind. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of my own uh, material and stuff I've written with other people. A bunch with Alan Doyle and some Chris Kirby stuff, Paul Lamb, my God, uh, Barney Bentall. Yep. Uh, legendary heart, legendary hearts. Uh, that's another conversation we can have. Oh, okay. anyway. uh, seriously, we could continue this for four or five more episodes. But the one you did with Barney Bentall, oh God, I'm sorry, Corey, it's slipping my mind. I know it, it plays in my head a lot. Um, it's called "In the Morning," that song that we wrote. Oh together. my God, which of course you did a video for uh, that with Kendall Carson out at Stone Mountain Art Center, where it all Correct. started for me anyway. Because I have a picture. That's good. <laughs> I'll yep, send you a picture great. later of that evening. It was just a, just a magical. You're one of those people that it's like, this is why I was nervous all day before this interview. Um, you're one of those magical people that is like, are you ready for this conversation with Corey Tedford? Like, <laughs> are you present enough to appreciate how amazing it is to talk to Corey? I appreciate this so much to have some time with you and congratulations. It is so well deserved. Um, I'm looking forward to the shows. And of course, I'll put you right on the spot. Do you need somebody to come and like carry your pedal case or... Uh, gas up yep. the bus, yep. or I'm gas available. The, yeah, we'll do all of, all of the above. We, we, <laughs> we're gonna need some. We're gonna need some people. I am available uh, look, for road um, trips around Newfoundland anytime <laughs> you need anything, and I'm multi talented. I'll cook you eggs. I don't care. Whatever you need. Oh, good lord! I do love some eggs. Um, here, here is the thing. Um, uh, you know, I, I um, you never need to be nervous to talk to me. Anybody. God lord, I'm a dude doing. But I love, so it's all good, man. <laughs> Corey, I have a line that I put in a song that you said to me a long time ago, and it was, uh, you don't need to worry about what I'm thinking when you're talking, I'm just listening. And when I got off the phone, I cried and cried and cried and cried. I put it in a song. It was the most 
most amazing human thing. Like, it just cut through all the bullshit and just got mm. right to me as a human being, cut through all the anxiety, all the, you know, stuff that gets in your head. It was just, oh, this is a safe person. And that's what you are for me. So. Well, I'm grateful to be so. And, and uh, if we could be as such to everybody and all the people around us, my God, well, it would be a better place, wouldn't it? Well, I'd like to think that that kind of energy has a way of like filtering, you know, rippling out to things. And it, maybe we can't be nice to every single person we meet, but I think that kind of energy is something that it's good to see other people experiencing it, um, you know, th so that they know it's, it exists. And so thank yeah. you for when, when I, I kind of saw this today, like, all right, let's make some magic because this is a joke at shows. Like, when do I ever get to perform with Corey Tedford? Because, of course, we <laughs> you're, you are, you're, you have some vocals and stuff on some of our songs. And yeah. uh this is performing. This is sharing something with the world and, and bringing some stories that people might not have heard before. And uh, this is a performance. And one of these this days, I'm putting it out to the universe. I say it every time I go on stage. One of these days, I want to be on the same stage as Corey Tedford and uh, maybe do the songs we, re we did together. And, you know, maybe something else. Maybe there's something that has, doesn't even exist yet. But I'm just going to put that out there. If you don't right. say it out loud, how would you ever read my mind and guess it, right? Yeah, uh, my holy trinity is thought, speech, action. So off we go. Well, that's where it starts, right? It starts off as a thought. And why would I get that thought? Speaking. Well, because maybe I'm, you know what I mean? Like maybe yep. someone down the road, like my next door neighbor is not saying, man, I wish I could sing with Corey Tedford one of these days. They should. They should want to. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't want to. So, <laughs> Well, this is just it, right? This is why, this is why uh, you know, the universe speaks to you like that is uh, maybe there's something we're supposed to do one of these days. Who knows? I have been honored. I've been honored to be in your path at all in our lifetime. And I wish you all the best out on the road. And with this new Ron Hines tribute album, of course, which is coming out on October 20th. Uh, and it's called Sunny Don't Go Away. And it's going to be like just... It's just amazing. It's just another example of all the amazing stuff that can happen uh, in the beautiful world of music and um, people working together and being beautiful together. Corey, good luck with the tour, um, and we'll catch you out on the road for sure. And anytime, you want to come back anytime, we'll talk to you all day long. All right. Well, thanks for having me, guys. I, I'm grateful. And again, if you get a chance, you know, if you're listening to this and you get a chance to listen to this record, um, just, you know, close your eyes and listen to it with the res seriously with the respect and gratitude and humility that it was created. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. Corey, you're amazing. You're a gentleman and a scholar, and it's been an honor. And uh, we will talk again soon, sir. I hope so. I always have a great time chatting with you. Thank you so much. Bye.